All right, so technique part two for today. So we just covered tripod, shaking them, clearing the knee line, knee cut, knee slice to side control. Sometimes I gotta kick the foot or I can go staple the knee to three quarter mount, use my shoelace pass, take the mount, just so we all know. If I go directly from half guard, top half guard to the mount, I still get three points for passing the guard plus four for the mount. That's a seven point technique. Generally, you guys know me. <laughs> I would like to see people hitting the dominant positions. What is the dominant position, coach? I'm newer in jiu-jitsu. Dominant position, there's only two of them in jiu-jitsu. The mount and the back. We're always looking for those, okay? And if we had to choose between the mount and the back, I'm looking for the back. All right, that being said, I'm gonna give you guys a fielder's choice today. What do we mean by that? I'll show you two. You can practice them both or you can practice one. I know a lot of us have this first skill set with the Americana. Americana is an incredibly good position, submission to have in jiu-jitsu. I can hit it from top half guard. I can hit it from side control. I can hit it from mount. You can even hit them from bottom half guards. So there's different positions we can Americana from. Let's break that down first. Remember, jiu-jitsu is a game of what if. What if I'm trying all this stuff. I try my shin press. I tried to tripod. I can't clear the knee line. This person's got iron thighs. Okay, I'd like to advance position, but sometimes I can't advance. Certain people are hard to get good positions on. So if I get kind of married in here, I have my underhook, cross face. I've done a good job winning the chin, pinning the shoulders. I try to come up. I can't shake him. All right, look. First off, if he's got his arm dangling out here, I can still hit it, but what is the bottom player gonna be looking to do? A lot of times they're gonna be looking to get their throat frame. If then, if they hit the throat frame and I can't advance, I can still hit the Americana from here. All of our fundamentals on our checklist are still the same. I've got my underhook. Personally, especially on this one, I like to attach my bicep up underneath the armpit. So I see a lot of people just doing the Americana from here. That's okay, we wanna add a little bit of details. Punch it up. Almost like I'm sucking my thumb, I'm gonna use this bite motion to lock down his shoulder and elbow. Now, just for a second, I may have to lean my chest weight back onto it. Come around, thumb down, and I'm gonna to look to exaggerate so I can get a good purchase on the wrist. Now, I'm driving the hand to the mat, making sure that my elbow is locking the head out, pinning the hand, palms down. And remember guys, sometimes, this is common at all levels for people to run a, a, a C-clamp, a Lego grip, whatever you wanna call it here. Once I lock this up, just like a Kimura, I wanna to try to lose my thumbs and get two spoon grips. Boom. Always remember the mechanics. If his elbow is up, look at all the play in his joint. His arm is designed to rotate this way. So with any Americana from any position, I need to seat or sink the elbow. As I bring the elbow down here, I can already feel I felt air intense up because he knows that now he's got very little play in his joint. So never hand above the head. The idea is to always connect the elbow as low to the hip as possible. Lock it, pin it, lift it. So we have this first option, I'm here. I can't tripod up. Up, squeeze, circle, lose the thumbs, seat the elbow, pin the hands, lift. Okay, what if, let's talk about what if. What if Aaron's got his hands behind my head here and I can't pass? I can run an Ezekiel choke, okay? So, you guys' choice. I know a lot of us are really familiar with attacking this Americana. So, my other option, I have an underhook. Traditionally, if I could pummel to the inside, I get a little better play on finishing this Ezekiel. But today, let's see if we can do it with arm in. So now he's doing what I've always affectionately called the man hug. He's hugging me. I can't get my arm in the inside, that's okay. There's just one simple trick if I wanna do the Ezekiel while he's still got an arm in the way. I, need to, I can't have my elbow under his armpit. Look, this doesn't give me enough leverage and a good enough purchase. So the same thing we did last time where I punched my elbow up and I bit down to lock his shoulder, but his arm was in front of my face so I could attack the Americana. Really hard to attack an Americana if his arm is behind my head. So guess what? The farther his arms are away from his throat, the more, the more his throat is open, if that makes sense. So I'm here. Dang, he didn't get a throat frame. Punch the arm up. I like to feed four fingers. I have seen people do three. Then Professor Pat, my main coach from uh, purple belt to black belt, I don't know, he had like mute Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fingers. He could hook two fingers in and he could hit the Ezekiel from here. If I were you guys, I would try to get my, my blade, my karate chop. And uh, something I haven't mentioned this time. Some of you guys know this, I call this the rodeo wave. You ever been to a rodeo and the princesses ride the horse around, they go like this. If I grab right here, I'm not gonna have much leverage in front of the throat. So once I hook my hand in, I kind of do the little rodeo wave and I want the fabric to be halfway between my wrist and my elbow. And again, my elbow can't be down low. I have to kind of punch it up in the air. Now when I circle over, I need to seat this hand. So let's say he's dropping his chin. I'm gonna chisel down underneath the chin. Last thing, see this pocket between my ring hand and here? 
I want to try to tighten this little triangle space here on the top of the shoulder. How do I do that? I pull it over. And now I'm dropping my hands and elbows to the mat and I'm doing a karate chop like motion to cut down. So I'm in here, punch it tight, get my hand over. And I do see people do this. They grab and they squeeze, but this locks my hand in. I want this chopping motion where now I'm dropping, pulling and chopping all at the same time. So all that talk, I come in here, arm is behind, hook, little rodeo wave, get my elbow up, seat, and if I have to, I'll make a couple little quick jerks, tighten it up. Now this hand is going down while I'm punching this hand to the mat, and now I start my karate chop motion. Boom. So if his hand's in front, hit the Americana. If his arm is behind, get my Ezekiel. Here's what I like. Uh, let's do it like this. I'm gonna put six minutes left on the clock. Top player, you have three minutes. If you wanna do nothing but Ezekiel's or nothing but Americanas, that's your choice today. I'm giving you guys a little more freedom to run either A or B, okay? You want to, hit them both. Make sure you can hit your Americanas. Make sure you can hit your Ezekiel chokes. Ready, one, two, three. I think Adrian gets a kick out of that. Okay guys, third and final <laughs> technique for today. Some of us have been over this before, but I will say this, even those of us who've been over this before, we can always get better at it. Uh, chair sit, back take. Let's break some of the terminology down so that some of the newer folks, chair sit. It's just a term that we use in jujitsu, and it literally comes from I'm in like a dentist chair sitting down. When I'm ready, when we're done, they sit me up. So if you're like, what does he keep talking about chair sit, back take? Okay, well I'm gonna take his back and I'm gonna use it to do a chair sit. Why? Because it's pretty hard if Aaron's down on the ground, there's no space between his shoulder blades and his back for me to tuck my body in behind. So. I've gotta be able to sit him up to create space between the, the, the shoulder blades and the mat. And just so you guys know, there's a more advanced term in jiu-jitsu that's called creating upper back exposure. Later, when some of us talk about barom bolos and rolling back takes, if I wanna truly take that partner's back, I've gotta create space for me to fit in behind. So for right now, the chair sit mechanism comes with, when I'm ready, I need to lift the shoulders off the mat so I've got a spot for me to tuck in behind. All right, so there's kind of all the nomenclature behind this. Now, I'm in with my underhook, my cross face. I'm making sure I'm pinching my thighs. I'm turning the cheek to put a twist in his spine and making him weak. Now we've been talking about a little bit today, tripod, pass, mount. We also talked about tripod, shake, cut. If he's holding onto my foot, I can kick and come in. Some of you guys are like, well, coach, what about inside Senkaku on the legs? Yes, just so some of you guys know it can come later. We get into to certain Ashigramis, leg entanglements. Watch. I can try my tripod and my three quarters, come around, trap the legs, start coming in and attacking. Okay, so we have other things that we can do from here. Today, let's leave some of that stuff alone because it's more advanced. Let's talk back take. Just like when we did tripod earlier, I gave you guys a choice. Knee cut to side control or staple my knee. If I'm gonna do this back take, here's my suggestion. Get to the three quarter mount. Make sure that my knee is on the mat. When the chin, pin the shoulders, shake, 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 boom. Everybody see my knee is on the mat, no space. The only thing that's special with this, I already have one underhook, but this arm, no underhook, because I have a cross face. Watch, I'm gonna drop my head, reach back, almost like I'm looking in my back pocket for, for a dollar bill or something, right, boom. I need to reach back and I need to hit my underhook. When I get my underhook, I'm gonna lift it up and post my hand above the head. Why do I need him answering a question over here? Because I'm now gonna pommel my head, trap the elbow. How many times do you guys hear me talk about if I want the back take, I have to trap the elbow. Now, I'm gonna come around. I can gift wrap him here, or if I can't reach the hand, that's fine, as long as I trap the elbow. Now, I'm gonna get my knee high. Sit him up, back to the chair sit. Sit him up, tuck my knee in so I can staple my chest to the back. Roll into the far side, I already have one hook. Here's my second hook. So, I know we're moving pretty quick tonight. I'll show this like four times smooth. Uh, go sideways. With the chin to the shoulders, tripod to three quarters. Now I have time to dig two underhooks. Not just an underhook, a high underhook, so I'm wiping the mat. I'm gonna chin pummel and trap the elbow. If I can get a gift wrap, even better. Now, my knee comes high. As I transfer my weight off, I sit him up. 
connect my knee to his kidney, fall to the far side. I already have one hook, two hooks. Chair sit back take from three quarter mount. I cannot do this from a standard half guard because he has the knee line. So let's go this way this time. Try to give you guys all four angles. Let's just run this scenario down. If I go right here, I trap the elbow. I can't take the back, he has my knee line. So I need to slip the knee line first. Staple, underhook, elbow trap. Now I can sit him up, take the back, where all of my chokes are gonna come from. All of my submissions are gonna come from. Okay, you guys need to see it again, you think you got it. Good, <coughs> okay, uh, six minutes on this one. And then for this one, let's go back to our normal pattern. You go four times, they go four times, rinse and repeat till the time beats. Ready? One, two, three.